Dr. Witkin's tips on how to beat stress Sunday today in New York. This is WNBC for New York. Good evening, I'm Carol Jenkins. Ralph Penza is off tonight. The U.S. clashes with Iraq again. Word is just coming in from Washington tonight that three Navy warplanes were shot at in the southern no-fly zone of Iraq. One of the U.S. jets bombed the Iraqi position that attacked them. A Navy source in Washington says the U.S. planes returned safely to the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk in the Persian Gulf. This is the third day in a row that U.S. warplanes attacked Iraqi positions. However, it's the first incident in the no-fly zone since Saddam Hussein declared a unilateral ceasefire. Another explosive issue facing the new president, abortion. And its foes turn out in force for a second straight day in the nation's capital. Anti-abortion protesters blocked abortion clinics, faced arrest, and promised to send a clear signal to President Clinton. Sandy Gilmore reports from Washington. Members and sympathizers of the hardline Operation Rescue anti-abortion group blocked entrances to four Washington area clinics. Police said more than 300 were arrested as they carried out well-rehearsed protests. At one clinic, demonstrators tied themselves to railroad tracks and had to be cut loose before police could haul them away. Protesters also glued locks on doors. Clinic officials said their offices were blocked for about two hours and all clear by noon. Patients were able to get inside, they said. Pro-abortion rights advocates are worried that anti-abortion forces will get increasingly violent as they lose support in Congress and the White House. We've already seen in the last year a step up of harassment of doctors and their families. We feel quite certain that as the tide turns against the antis even more, that they will in fact become more violent. And in fact, Michael Bray, who has served time for bombing a clinic, hinted at more. Uh, in, in, uh, I would call it force. It's not indiscriminate violence, it's force against abortion clinics. Yes, I would expect such. President Clinton was putting in overtime in the Oval Office today, but made no comment on the protests. However, they follow his action yesterday, overturning bans on abortion counseling and liberalizing other federal rules. So we are, as far as federal power is concerned, we are on the outs. But the abolitionists took over 50 years of hard, hard work to achieve their goal, and we're just not going to give up until we're either cold and dead in the grave or until we win. For the first time in 12 years, anti-abortion forces have no friend in the White House, and they're fighting losing battles in Congress. Abortion rights advocates fear their opponents more and more will be turning to violence. Sandy Gilmore, NBC News, Washington. Well, John Cardinal O'Connor is just back from yesterday's anti-abortion rally in Washington, but he declined to comment on Clinton's actions. The Vatican isn't happy about Clinton's abortion policy either. The Vatican newspaper today called Clinton's actions a, quote, humiliating defeat for humanity. The Vatican also said those who hope Clinton's talk of renewal would lead to the protection of human life have been disappointed. President Clinton spent much of his Saturday starting over in his search for an attorney general. The president invited reporters to the Oval Office today for his first photo uh, opportunity in the historic room. He says he is looking at three or four candidates to fill the attorney general's post, but he gave no clues to their identities. Clinton must replace nominee Zoe Baird, who withdrew under fire this week because she hired illegal aliens for domestic help. Tonight, two Republican candidates for New Jersey governor also admit employing illegal aliens in their homes. Christy Whitman and Carrie Edwards both say they hired illegal aliens for domestic help. Whitman plans to announce her candidacy next week. Edwards, who already threw his hat into the ring, is making his second run for the governor's post. Well, women living in the Upper West Side of Manhattan are breathing a little easier tonight. That's because police have arrested and charged three suspects with a series of rapes in the area. Steve Dawson reports. According to police, all three suspects are in their 20s and were identified in police lineups by the three rape victims. The men are accused of a string of rapes which started in late December, all in Lower Manhattan, below West 34th Street. The most recent rape coming a week ago. The break in the investigation came when a police officer became suspicious of this purple Pontiac and checked the license plates. He found it was wanted in a rape case. From there, it was an easy matter to trace the owner. Police then picked up the car's driver, 23-year-old James Welcome of Brooklyn, and after questioning, arrested the other two. One of the men, 23-year-old James Ross, was arrested at the Park Place Squash and Exercise Club in Lower Manhattan, where he worked as a counterman, reserving squash courts and handling money. Police say they also took two guns from Ross at the health club. The owner told us Ross had worked there for a few years and had a good employee record. 
According to police, the way the suspects selected their victims was at random, cruising the streets below West 34th in Manhattan, grabbing their victims off the streets as they came out of bars, throwing them into cars, raping them, and then releasing them. All three men are charged with kidnapping, rape, and unlawful imprisonment. Steve Dawson, News 4, New York. Well, police are also investigating whether the suspects are connected to a fourth rape. Well, tonight, Jean Harris is a free woman. The 69-year-old former school headmistress was paroled last night. Harris was convicted of killing her former lover, Scarsdale Diet Dr. Herman Tanner. She served nearly 12 years in prison working with other inmates. She was granted clemency by Governor Cuomo last month, just before undergoing quadruple bypass heart surgery. Well, a Long Island man remains in police custody tonight for allegedly harassing Joseph Buttafuoco. Nassau County Police arrested 24-year-old Paul Paranello last night. He allegedly blocked Buttafuoco's path outside a pizza place at the Sunrise Mall and somehow insulted him. Buttafuoco called mall security and they held Paranello until police arrived. Paranello could not post bail and is being held in Nassau County Jail. Buttafuoco, as you know, has been the subject of much attention since Long Island teen Amy Fisher shot his wife last May. Well, here we go again. Another MTA fare hike may be in the works. The Metropolitan Transit Authority will hold a hearing in March to discuss raising bus and subway fares to $1.50. MTA officials say that if it's approved, the price hike would go into effect April. Officials say the 25-cent increase is needed to offset a projected $230 million deficit this year. Well, the tabloid troubles of the New York Post go all the way back to 1801 when Alexander Hamilton began the newspaper. As owner, Hamilton faced financial problems then, and the story is much the same today. As News Force Julian Phillips reports, today's edition could be the last if unions don't agree to a pay cut. Do you think that uh, the unions will agree unanimously to take this pay cut? Not much of an alternative. 80% is better than 0%. Tom Granito has resigned to the hard, cold fact that the choice is simple enough. Take the 20% pay cut or join the unemployment line. You know, it's not easy at 45 years old starting over. Granito has worked here for the Post the past 27 years. And with a wife and two kids, his options are few, just like his brother. Well, they tried to bury us three or four times here. You know, if you got to take a 20% cut, you got to take it. Nobody likes to take it, but, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You got to earn a living. The shocker came Friday night for the Post 700 plus employees. The nation's oldest daily lost its line of bank credit. And Post publisher Peter Calico, who himself filed for personal bankruptcy last year, announced the paper is up for sale. So far, four of the ten unions representing employees have agreed to the cuts. The others must comply by tomorrow. If not, today's edition just might be the last. New York without the Post? A dreadful thought to some New Yorkers. What would you miss most about this paper? <laughs> the crazy news stories that they have. I mean, sometimes I don't know if I should believe them or not. I don't think the, the city uh, would do well with just uh, the times and the news. What would you miss most about the Post? The gossips and, <laughs> and the headlines. It's the second time in two and a half years the Post has asked its employees to take a pay cut. And most believe all unions will agree to the owner's latest proposals. But even if that happens, there are no guarantees. They must find a new owner in time to keep this paper in circulation. Julian Phillips, News 4, New York. Well, if the unions agree to a pay cut, that will give the Post four more weeks to find a new owner. Otherwise, the paper will shut down. But we have much more ahead for you on News 4. Hundreds of women march on the UN to protest unspeakable acts being committed against women in the former Yugoslavia. Meanwhile, the threat of all-out war increases in that violence-torn country. And here, aspiring ballerinas line up hoping to study with the masters. But first, here's our own weather master, Ira. We go from 2-2 to so-so -so in the weather, Carol. Will it rain? Stay tuned. Your forecast is straight ahead on News 4 New York. a seed planted with determination and the desire to grow. Experience the exciting life histories of African Americans, surviving hard circumstances with the strength and willpower to blossom and change the world. 
The new McDonald's African American Heritage Series Volume 2. One dollar at participating McDonald's while supplies last. And with net proceeds to the United Negro College Fund, your contribution will help more young minds to blossom. Get your tape today. a reality. Only $24 a month. At Valley, call 1-800-WORKOUT. Well, the war, war atrocities in former Yugoslavia sparked a call for action today at the United Nations. Hundreds of members of the Women's Action Coalition and their supporters marched on the UN demanding a stop to the massive rapes and punishment for those responsible for crimes against women. We are demanding an immediate halt to the rapes and enforced pregnancies. We want conditions, we want safe havens for the women. We want a strengthened UN peacekeeping force to ensure humanitarian aid and reproductive rights. And we want rape prosecuted as a war crime. Well, the coalition is asking the United Nations to establish a permanent war crimes tribunal. Meanwhile, the violence in the former Yugoslavia tops our news from around the world. Just as peace talks resume in Geneva, so do threats of a full-scale war. At the Geneva talks today, Serbian and Croatian leaders promised to try to stop the renewed fighting between their forces, but fears of an all-out war have intensified after Serbian forces raided several UN weapon depots in Croatia. Here at home, FBI Director William Sessions is blaming former Attorney General William Barr for a Justice Department report that concluded that Sessions is abusing his office. Sessions met with reporters today to begin a counteroffensive to the report that he found uh, that found he misused his office for petty financial gain. President Clinton is awaiting a report before taking any action. And Russian leaders, Bor leader Boris Yeltsin and President Clinton today discussed plans for a summit. The two men spoke on the phone this morning and agreed to keep the dialogue going between the two countries. The site of the summit has not been determined. The Reverend Al Sharpton had sharp words for President Clinton today. Sharpton blasted the president for what he said were broken promises on Haitian refugees. The activist said Mr. Clinton got a lot of votes based on his campaign promise to welcome Haitians fleeing to the United States. But Sharpton called that promise the ultimate political deception. No one should sacrifice the lives of people for a political goal. Uh, the whole thing of ends justifying the means is good for those that are not in the jaws of the lion. I've been to Haiti, and those people down there cannot survive and cannot tolerate one extra day of tyranny. Well, Sharpton also said today he has decided not to run for city council president, but reaffirmed that he is exploring a possible challenge to Senator Moynihan. Well, for the first time since she became First Lady, Hillary Clinton will visit New York City next week. Mrs. Clinton will travel from Washington to Manhattan on Tuesday. The First Lady, who has been hailed for her work with children, will be in town to accept an award from the National Child Labor Committee. And still ahead, a colorful display in Chinatown today as New Yorkers ring in the Chinese New Year. And it was the perfect weather for a celebration. Ira is up next to tell us if the warm weather will last. We'll be right back. Wow, that's a lot of shrimp. At Red Lobster, for a limited time, enjoy 30 shrimp for just $9.99. What sounds good to you folks tonight? 30 shrimp, please. Great choice. With lemon pepper shrimp, succulent scampi, delicious grilled shrimp, and our famous fried shrimp. That's four different kinds. 30 shrimp on one plate, just $9.99, at only one place. Only at Red Lobster. And kids get shrimp, too. A complete meal, just $1.99. Extra, extra, read all about it. Mario Perillo and Alitalia announced two brand new tours. The spectacular Three Capitals, London, Paris, and Rome, and the fantastic Spain and Italy tour. See Italy, England, France, and Spain, the all-inclusive Perillo way. So good to get space, you've got to really, really, really hurry. For this free Perillo brochure, see your travel agent or call 1-800-255-5000 now. Bills, bills, and more bills. More than you can handle? If you're a homeowner, call Statewide Capital at 1-800-DIAL-CASH and consolidate them into one low-cost home equity loan. Even if you've been turned down at the bank, you can lower your monthly payments. Your interest may be tax-deductible. 
Then get just one monthly bill. Make one low payment. For a better tomorrow, dial cash today. Call Statewide Capital now at 1-800-DIAL-CASH. And here's one going out to all you early risers. So this is what the new Velvet Voice of the Night eats for breakfast? Mm -hmm. This is a whole grain cereal. With sugar and preservatives. Oh, well, that Kellogg's doesn't have Kellogg's any. Kellogg's is made from pure whole grain. So? So it's the only whole grain cereal with no sugar added and no preservatives. The only one, huh? Uh-huh. Hmm. And you know what else? You wouldn't. Hmm? The song's over. Don't talk with your mouth full. Kellogg's Nutrigrain, as good as whole grain gets. Well, today is the first day of the lunar calendar beginning the year of the rooster. And since the Chinese words for rooster and luck are pronounced exactly the same, it's a special year. In New York City's Chinatown, it started with a traditional bang. Firecracker blasts are meant to scare away evil spirits. And any who don't hear the message are menaced by the dragons. The Lunar New Year, or a Spring Festival, is China's top holiday. This year of the rooster, the year 4691, replaces the year of the monkey under the zodiac calendar of 12 animals. Let's all hope it's a lucky year for us. Sure, absolutely. Yes. How um, are you? Welcome back. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Great job at the inauguration. Thank you. We had, we, it was an interesting time. This uh, would yeah. be a fascinating week. And the weather held up. Thank yes, it did. The <laughs> weather's real boring right here, right now, today. But, but it's going to get interesting. Oh, I hope. Okay, let's uh, check outside first of all, and we'll think about our temperature, shall we? It's uh, right now sitting at 41 degrees, and the sky above is partly cloudy and other statistical information germane to the weather northwest wind at eight miles an hour chilly 60 percent relative humidity and the barometer rising 30.16 inches right now we have a high pressure ridge that is uh, in control of our weather and it's sweeping across the area but look right there that's a cold front bum 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 he added for dramatic effect that is going to push clouds into our area as early as tomorrow morning the clouds will lower and the clouds will thicken and by afternoon by this time we could be talking about rain Temperatures holding up nicely in the 40s around our area. In Central Park, 46 was our high temperature today in the low 40 degrees. And tonight we're going to see temperatures in places going down around the freezing mark. A variably cloudy sky tonight might even see a little bit of clearing. And a west wind at 5 to 10 miles an hour will by morning become a south wind, bringing more moisture in to greet the front as it sweeps through our area. And we will see the clouds increase. The sun will rise at 713. Temperatures inching or degreeing as temperatures do up through the 30s tomorrow on their way during the day into the 40s and 50s well above normal uh, south wind will dominate the weather it'll be 10 to 15 miles an hour and even gustier than that in the afternoon and by afternoon we could see some rain tumbling out of the clouds five-day forecast tomorrow cloudy chance of showers later on in the day high 51 oh but that bottom falls out of the thermometer on monday to use a cliche 35 will be the high Lots of sunshine. Tuesday, variable clouds in the inland interior sections could see some snow. 33 will be the high. Wednesday and Thursday, mostly sunny. Highs 36, Wednesday 38, Thursday, and of course colder inland. And the nighttime lows will be in the teens and in the 20s. And I drew some new snowflakes just in honor of your return from Washington, <laughs> Carolyn. Oh, that's so sweet. Put them on, that's, sure. That's so kind. Where do you think these really warm days, is that odd, 50? Uh, yeah, it's odd. It's <laughs> I, I, odd is not a meteorological term. Usually above normal is the one that uh, is employed in those circles. Well, that's but what I mean. You're right. In fact, uh, we're going to start using odd. such words in the forecast. Odd weather is coming up, yes. Great. Thank you, Ira. Sure. Still to come, a chance to dance with the best. Local ballerinas audition for the chance of a lifetime. And we'll go down under to check out the first Grand Slam event of the year. Sound Sports, next. look innocent enough until they start ganging up on you. Then you'll be glad you invested in the security of Jeep Grand Cherokee with all the time four-wheel drive, an optional V8, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and an exclusive driver's side airbag. Because when you're outnumbered millions to one, you need all the help you can get. Test drive Jeep Grand Cherokee at your dealer now. There's only one Jeep, and it's only at your tri-state Jeep and Eagle dealers. Those who expect more from a credit card must not settle for less. First, eliminate cards charging the highest rates or not offering fixed or variable rate options. Demand worldwide acceptance, 24-hour customer service, and gold card benefits. And insist upon price assurance, purchase protection, extended warranties, and satisfaction guarantee. So what remains? The Grand Elite Visa Gold Card from Chemical Bank. 
If you possess one, do use it. If not, call 1-800-342-9900 to apply. Rest stops. Service stations. Better mileage. Try our cars. They're more fun. They ask Cairns Newark. Call 1-800-7-Bahamas or your travel agent. I don't know, Sal. Sort of my kind of weekend. You know? Yes. <laughs> you know why? Yeah. I, yeah, I'll I love tell it. you why. <laughs> A weekend without football for the first time since the preseason games in August. The Super Bowl is still a week away. I like the Bills, yes. the Bills, and more Bills. Mm -hmm. This day, the main game, college hoops. Georgetown at UNLV, running Rebels living up to their nickname. J.R. Ryder to the hoop. UNLV led by 24 at the half and won 96 to 80. Here's a buzzer beater, Wisconsin at Michigan State. Jason Johnson of the Badgers, a three-pointer that beat the clock. Wisconsin won 67-66. Fordham has just defeated Colgate 55-54. Insiders say Bernard King may be returning to the Nets. The other day, King was dropped by the Bullets. New Jersey's hurting without uh, Chris Morris, who has a sore hip. And they're not scoring enough points, as evidenced by last night's 11-point defeat in Atlanta. The Hawks, fought by ex-net Mookie Blaylock, wiped out an eight-point deficit in the third quarter. Mookie burned his old team with 18 points. Derek Coleman said the Nets were tired after losing to the Bulls the previous night, and the bench didn't contribute enough. Coleman led the Nets with 22. Atlanta's Dominique Wilkins was the show. He totaled 38-14 in the fourth quarter. Nets lost 102-91. In Philadelphia, the Knicks stopped the Sixers' sick three-game winning streak. Doc Rivers from 75 feet. Switch. Sixers guilty of 25 turnovers. Patrick Ewing beat the halftime buzzer. Ewing collected 34 points in his third straight strong game. And John Starks popped for 32, 26 in the second half. Knicks won their third straight, 109-91. When you're getting good looks at the basket and guys doing a great job of uh, setting good picks and, and, and freeing you up, uh, you have to be able to knock the shot down, you know, and I've just been working on that. And, and like I was telling you back in New York, the baskets just look big to me right now. The Knicks and Nets off tonight. Knicks ahead of the Nets by only two and a half games. Hockey Devils jumped ahead of the Rangers by two points into third place, winning at home against Montreal last night. This was a wicked one, chippy as they say in hockey. John McClain with a two-handed slash against Benoit Brunet, who suffered a broken thumb. There were a total of 164 penalty minutes, a record for the Meadowlands Arena. This one of several skirmishes. In the first period, three straight goals by Bobby Holik of the Devils. The natural hat-trick powered the Devils to a 6-2 victory. All three teams skate tonight. It's summertime in Australia. The first of the four major championships in tennis continue in Melbourne. The Australian Open Friday night here, Saturday there. Men's play, Pete Sampras of the U.S. in the far court had words with Alex and Tonich. No name calling, but these two didn't get along. Sampras won in straight sets to advance to the round of 16, 7 5 on a tiebreaker, 6 4 and 6 2. Stefan Edberg of Sweden in the near court is seated second. He knocked off Amos Mansdorf of Israel in four sets. In the near court, America's teen queen, Jennifer Capriati, defeated Natalia Zareva. From the Soviet Union, 7575. That's the former Soviet Union, of course. A baseball immortal is taking his cuts against an owner who admitted in a deposition that she's made racist remarks about blacks and Jews. Mark Schatz's attorneys maintain that Major League Baseball has no power to suspend her. Schatz's legal team taking the offensive in this controversial issue. I spoke with home run king Henry Aaron, who believes Schatz should be disciplined. And what I'm afraid of is that uh, you got a lot of Marge just on in ball club, you know, not only her, but I think there's a lot of Marge shots out there, you know. Henry, do you personally accept Marge shots apology? No, I don't. I, I, uh, I, let, let me put it this way. When I say I don't, I think anybody's entitled to a mistake. But I think that you have to, the law doesn't allow you to be ignorant. If you're ignorant, you have to pay the penalty, you know. I, I accept it to the point of saying that she has made a mistake, she has to pay the price. That's the, that's, she's she guilty, she's guilty. Bob Selleck, the, the commissioner du jour, says there won't be a quick decision on the lady who keeps a swastika at home. 
Golf, lefty Phil Mickelson had the golf shot of the day in the third round of the Tucson Open. A nine iron from 100 yards away. It rolled into the hole. Leader still on the course. Back at 11 with all the highlights and the lowdown. If you keep it where it is. Great. Thank you, Sel. So. Well, there was a golden opportunity in New York today for young people who dream of becoming ballet stars. The School of the American Ballet held open auditions for local teenage dance students. Those selected will spend the summer in Vail, Colorado, where they will study with dancers from the Russian Bolshoi Ballet and then go on to Moscow for four months of training. A big prize. Well, and we wish you a good evening. We'll see you tonight at 11 o'clock.